he wanted me to wear a safety belt because and that would ruin the whole picture. I said, no, I, I'd rather not if I don't have to. And he said, oh, God. He said, well, you, you know without saying what's going to happen if you fall. Uh, you know, you ain't going to be with us anymore. And I'm not going to be with the police anymore because I'm going to get fired. Your, your son's going to be a basket case. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for another episode of Pod County. We have a fantastic guest on this episode, Fred Comages, photojournalist for the News Journal for over 50 years. Fred had an amazing career. He had the opportunity to document so many amazing things, Uh, spent time with Muhammad Ali at his training camp in Pennsylvania, had inside access to Joe Biden throughout his entire career, and really just one of the coolest photographers uh, you could meet because he is so humble about his ability. Just a real inspiration uh, for me personally in my career uh, as I replaced Fred at the News Journal when he left. We we do talk quite a bit about uh, photos in this, which is tough to see through audio. So I'm going to find a way to try and share some links to some of the things we're talking about uh, so hopefully people can see them. If you are a fan of photography and photojournalism or a photojournalist, I think you really enjoy this. If you are a fan of Delaware history and uh, some of the moments that Fred got to be a part of, I think I think you're really going to enjoy it. So sit back and uh, relax and enjoy this episode with Fred Comages. We're here in the studio today with the legendary. Fred Comages, Delaware photography legend, and we also have his son, Butch Comages, here to make sure that we stay true to the facts. Try my best. Butch is going to, he's going to keep us honest. I'm going to try. He's going to try. He's going to fill in the gaps <laughs> where there are gaps. I will do my best. Know that he's an excellent and, 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 no, and that's no, true. No, no, in no. his own right, Butch is a phenomenal photographer. No. The apple did not bounce when no, it hit the no, ground. No, it like landed. It. it stayed put. No. Butch, you were in Scranton. For a long time, twenty-one years. Twenty-one as years as a staff photographer, and then senior staff photographer. And any anywhere before Scranton, or oh, many. Yeah, where else? Uh, before that was the Daily Item in Sunbury, Pennsylvania. Before that was the Danville News in Danville, Pennsylvania. Uh, God, uh, Cecil Wig in Elkton, Maryland. Newark Post. I did string for the News Journal, State News in Dover. I was the photographer there. Quite a bit. You, but you hit all the region. You were heavy in PA. And you were, and you yeah. were Scranton for a long time. Scranton, 21 Scranton years. Yeah, that was my main place. Yeah. Um, but Fred, yeah. one paper. Oh, man. One paper. So, Fred, you started the News Journal. You were a longtime News Journal photographer. How long were you at the News Journal? 52 years. 52 years. I started when I was 17, right out of high school. It's, it's a weird story. And I quit. When I started 17, I ended when I was 70. So... <laughs> Do the math. Said, at 70, I said, I've had enough. I'm, yeah. out, I'm out of here. So 53 years. Yeah. And that, so that means what year did you start at the Journal? Oh, right out of high school, 59, 1959. 1959. Yeah. So in that time, you've seen, I mean, because it was, it was 2012 then when you started or stopped. Yeah. You've seen a whole lot. A, a lot. So that's what, that's what we want to talk about today, a little bit of what you've seen. But I wasn't a photographer. I, I, I have... In my yearbook, they, you had to put what you wanted to be when you graduated. I had no idea. I was dumb. I wasn't going to go to college. <laughs> my parents had no money. I had no money. Uh, they said, you got to write something down quick. I said, uh, electrician, put electrician down. I know nothing about electronics. I know nothing about photography. But uh, I put electrician. That's how stupid I am. Well, uh, I'm not. I'll, I'll let Butch comment. I, I won't comment on that. But uh, he's not stupid. He's not no. Stupid. I don't. I don't think you are at all. He's not stupid. You came in to the news journal. You were 17 years old. You were not a photographer, though. What were you doing? I never took a picture in my life. I, I just graduated from school. I, I, my neighbor, uh, Sam Buccio, who I pray to every night, uh, said, f- "You're looking for a job." He said, uh, "He worked at the News Journal. He was he worked in the uh, distribution where they send the papers out uh, in trucks." He said, th- th- "They're looking for a. I have an application. If you want to apply at the News Journal, I said, "Oh yeah, I'd love to." I applied at the News Journal, and I got the job as a copy boy. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with way back when, but copy boys uh, <laughs> uh, were the lowest form of life at a, at a newspaper. I made coffee. I ran copy. Well, copy was 
what the what the reporters typed out. They put it in baskets, and you delivered it to the people upstairs that set the type. Back then, it was way before computers. We ran and got hamburgers for editors if they wanted it. Bought cigars for people as they run across the street, get us cigars. I did all the dirty work. I made thirty-five dollars a week. Took the bus to work and home. I got off at uh, ten at night, I think. Took the bus to. Uh, I lived out in uh, Glen Burnie Estates. The bus didn't r run that far. It was about a quarter mile walk at night. Jumped off the bus, ran home. There's a drive-in theater. Had to run by there or walk home every night. I gave uh, twelve dollars of what I made to my parents because I lived at home for board. I cleared myself. I made fourteen dollars a week. Fourteen dollars a week. Yeah. And this is in fifty-nine, sixty. Yeah. yeah. And you grew up in Delaware. Oh yeah, I born, raised in Wilmington. Yeah. So from from the get go, this is it. This this has been <laughs> that's my job. The spot. <laughs> they, I, I remember in high school reading a study that said like most people, I think it was like eighty percent of people live within fifty miles of where they were born. But it sounds like you you didn't get more than like ten. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> as excited as I am. I I live right now a half uh, two blocks from where I went to high school. I mean that's just, that's how the boring I am. Back yeah. in back in fifty nine, it w I'm, it wasn't the News Journal then, right? Was it the Morning News or yeah? There's two separate papers in the same building. Oh, okay. The Morning News and the Evening Journal. Okay. I get a job there as a copy boy. I never took a picture in my life, so photography wasn't even in my mind. I, but I said I can't be a copy boy all my life making thirty five dollars a week. I said I got to get a <laughs> I got to get promoted in here somehow. And I I figured well maybe I'll try reporting. And I wrote a couple of bits after a year or two. Uh, I said no, I can't do that. I saw photographers. That I told my bigger bosses, I'd, I'd like to be a photographer. And they said, well, you can't, you can't be a photographer. You're not a photographer. You've got to be a, you got to know something about photography. And I said, oh, God. I said, well, all right, that's what I want to be. But since I can't be, maybe I'll be a reporter. So I tried to write. A, like, people helped me. I wrote a story or two, small things. And, said, eh. and, um, and they said, how about engraving? So somebody has to do the engraving for the photographers. So the engraving department used to be behind right where the photographers worked. So I started doing, uh, I, I moved, they moved me up to an engraver. And it used to be right behind the photo lab, which really made me want to be a photographer because I saw, the, I did their pictures every day. They'd bring them back and say, here's a picture for, you know, I started doing engraving. I said, wow, these guys are taking pictures. That's pretty cool. And um, then, then they bought new engraving equipment, real big machines, and they moved me into a, a room away from the photographers, not far. But I said, I still want to be a photographer. So after doing engraving for about a year or two years, I said, this is not what I want to do. I still want to be a photographer. And they said, uh, just to make things short, it was a little bit longer, but other stuff happened. But I said, uh, can I still get in the photo department? I, re I said, you can, don't, don't have to give me a raise or anything. I said, look, okay, you're bugging us. We'll make you a, a lab tech, which is, in, if you'll read the foreword in my book, <laughs> he said, that's being, that's being generous. He said, you weren't a technician. I'm not a technician at all. But they said, we'll give you a job in the photo department, no raise, just a lateral, we'll squeeze you in sideways. Just so you could say you're in just, there. Just so you're in the photo lab. You're in the photo lab. So I, had to, I, I was in charge. They taught me how to make chemis chemistry for all the photographers. We, we bulk loaded the film in 100 foot rolls. I had learned how to bulk load the film for all the photographers, learned how to print so I could make reprint orders. I was a, basically a copy boy, but I was in the photo department finally. You were the photo department's copy boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever they wanted, that's what I did. And you were happier to do that because oh. at least it was closer to what you wanted to do. I was in the photo department. Yeah. Still haven't taken any pictures. And uh, finally, I, I, I bought my own camera, a Miranda. They don't even make Mirandas anymore. And on my days off, I would take pictures. And, f and I finally got a couple pictures published. Um, and they were pretty good. And my real, if you, if you don't want another progression, Bob Walker, one of the photographers, pretty good photographer, went on to work for the Fredericksburg uh, Freelance Star. But anyway, he took me out to the Memorial Bridge one day. He said, when you go with me? I said, yeah, that'd be really cool. We went up to the Memorial Bridge, got up on top of the uh, tower. We were using the Mamaya flexes, which are the, uh, like the roller flex. They're 12 exposure rolls. And a bigger camera. Big camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, no, we weren't using 35s. That was yeah. not we. I never did. But uh, I said, yeah, that would really be cool. So we get up to the t up on the tower at the Memorial Bridge, way up the hill. I and there's iron workers working on the cables, and I just kind of mimicked him. I was I went along with him, and I was shooting pictures with him. So we we shoot, we get back down, we get get back into the paper. He develops his film. Nothing. He developed, and he was he should know better. He was 
an accomplished photographer. Everything was double exposed. Oh no! All his pictures were double exposed. So, so mine were good. Oh no! He said, "Fred, he said I shouldn't be doing this." He said, "I'm going to use your picture <laughs> and put my name on it. Oh not no! Not my name, his name." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, "Don't tell anybody." And I didn't know. I'd never took pictures in my life. Yeah. I said, "Oh, that's cool." So the picture that's coming out next had a big four column vertical on the front page, deep, beautiful picture back with. Iron workers on his cable, uh, the Delaware River in the background, beautiful picture, uh, but it had Bob Walker photo, staff photo by Bob Walker, uh, and, and the only person who knew that it was my picture was me. And uh, you and Bob, yeah. Uh, and Bob, he he went out and, and made a sixteen by twenty print, framed it, gave me the print. I wish I, it was so stupid of me not to save that my first picture, one, real picture in the News Journal. And, and I, something happened to the picture, and I had thrown it away. He framed it, and uh, I should have saved the p paper because that was my first real mm. picture. But it really got me fired up because I think then I found out that I could really maybe do this. Yeah. And uh, how ethical is that? Oh, not at all. No, that's awful. <laughs> yeah. He said I, yeah, I shouldn't do that. He said, but I. Well, he was trying to. He's trying to protect his own butt, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And how how old were you at this time? I'm young. Yeah, twenty one. Like twenty one, right? So here's the twenty, the twenty one year old kid <laughs> who doesn't know how to take a picture is going to outshoot me. Like, yeah, yeah. there's no way, right? And so, so later on, maybe a week or two later, Humphrey, one of the candidates for president, came into town, or Johnson, one somebody, one somebody famous, I, I, the photographer took me out with him. The same thing happened. I was still using the stupid, you know, looking down from mm -hmm. my iPad, and uh, he messed his pictures up, and they used my picture in the paper of the president. Uh, but he gave me, I got credit for it. So I said. Now I think I'm, I, and, and they ran my picture. So uh, to make a long story short, Bill Sneed, I don't remember his name. Yeah. He came in from Kansas to our paper. In fact, the News Journal in its time was probably one of the, uh, at least top 10 best. Well, f for sure, right? Mm -hmm. So so let, let's talk about that a little bit because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the board of the National Press Photographers Association. I and mean, you guys both know the, the work that I've done with the contests mm -hmm. and, and rebuilding <coughs> that. And when I went back through the contest archives, I mean, in the late 60s and all through the 70s, the News Journal was the paper. You were a multi, 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 multi time winner uh, yeah, of the region. Uh, and region and national, national photographer of the year. National. Yeah, him, me, never taking a picture of my damn life. Right. Uh, I was the oldest guy that ever won the, the contest. And they said, You never took a picture in your life? And you won news. Yeah, I won newspaper photographer of the year. And uh, anyway, uh, I, Bill Sneed, who came in from Kansas, said, Look, he said, You're amazing. He said, You see that I, sh I shouldn't say. <laughs> well, well, you might be the first person to have said it. I will beep it. Don't worry. I don't know. I guess we, we're not. We're, we don't have to, but we maybe we will. Whatever. He, he really did. He said, "You're amazing." He said, "You see stuff that other people don't see." He said, "I'm going to give you. We're going to get you a camera. Uh, we're going to give you the strobes." And he said, "We're not going to. You go it on your own. You're going to teach yourself." He said, "And they, they nobody helped me with it." And and he said, "We're going to give you like a three month probationary trial." Now, I was pretty introverted. I wasn't. He said, you got to be a little bit forceful. You're in front of a lot of people. you got to kind of take charge sometimes. So I gave me a three-month thing, and he said, you're in. He said, I called my wife. I said, I'm a photographer. You know, I could have cried. I said, it was weird. That was the beginning. Yeah. That was, the, that was where it all started. Yeah. And so, you know, at this point, you've probably been around for maybe, what, two, three years at the paper? Oh yeah, longer than that, probably yeah. five. So, so uh, being a copy boy, being yeah. an engraver, then becoming a photographer, paying your dues. I mean, you like you had to pay in big time. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't know anything about photography. I still don't. I mean, I, I mean, uh, it's weird. I know technically, I just know nothing about photography. It's so weird, and people that know me understand that. And and I I mean, I didn't want to brag, but I've won tons of awards. Not that that matters. I don't even have them anymore. I don't. You know, the thing that about, about awards, my wife hung all this stuff up on all the walls and all her friends came over one night and she said, who's the bowler in your family? Who's, who's winning all these bowling awards? <laughs> and I said, no. My wife said, no, they're for, for photography. I said, oh, my God, take them down. You yeah. know, nobody has to know anything. So so that put me in, in my place. But, uh, yeah, I was, uh, it was for this one guy getting me the job at the News Journal and I found out something that I was pretty good at, luckily. And, uh, and and my son, so the same. I mean, it's weird how everybody has a strength. Um, I mean, some people are great mechanics, maybe great artists, maybe 
computer-wise. Some people are experts. I'm not good at any of that stuff. And I found out that I was uh, could be a pretty good photographer. Yeah. And I was so lucky. And, and same with him. He's great. My son's a great photographer. And it's just, I, I thank this guy every night f for what happened, you know. Well, you know, uh, talking about the contest, I, I had a buddy, we were talking, because, you know, uh, POYI is going on, BOP is about to start, and then it'll be World Press, and, you know, it'll be all, it's, it's contest season for photographers right now. It is, the, yeah. it is the time. And a buddy and I were talking the other day, and we were like, you know, if you win a contest, it's just proof that you were doing it right. And if you lose a contest, you're still doing it right. The judge is just an idiot. Well. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the way... That's the way you got to approach it. It's all a matter you know? of opinion. It's all a matter of opinion. All a matter of opinion. And it's, uh, we, we were just commenting, it's like so funny Me, to, yeah. to watch <laughs> what wins one year and what wins another year. And you can look and you can see the stuff that wins this year and like, oh, I took a photo that looked exactly like that three years ago and entered yeah. it and it didn't get out of the first round. Oh, oh yeah. And now it's the winner overall, right? Yeah. And it's so much of it can be... It can be timing. It can be who's in the room. It can be if you have a really strong personality and one judge that they just take the whole sure. thing over. Yep. And so, you know, I always tell young photographers when, you know, I'm, uh, oh, I don't, I'm not winning this. I'm trying to get in. I'm not doing, you know, as well as I'd like in these contests and all my friends are winning. And, you know, you, you just got to reassure them that it's, it's, it's all opinion. It's no big deal. That's right. But it's I will no tell you, deal. but if you're winning, you're, you're definitely doing something right. Right, but if you're not winning, it doesn't mean you aren't. Right, it doesn't mean sure. you don't know what you're doing. But Fred, you cleaned up well, for a long time. Yeah, I, I, and it was a little bit embarrassing. We always won the Pennsylvania Photographer of the Year, and the Pennsylvania photographers were, were kind of bu bummed out. They said, "We let you guys join because Delaware <laughs> wasn't big enough to have their own chapter, so it's you guys true. can join the Pennsylvania chapter." And then we'd be lugging all these uh, awards down there, and they they were in fun. They said. Uh, we don't mind. We let you guys join, but it's fun. Yeah, but they were good about it. And, and yeah, contests are funny. I'm, I've judged a lot of contests, and people come say, oh, my God, this picture won. Like you said, this picture won in the last contest. You guys only gave it a third. So, well, and I taught, and, and here's another story. Uh, Cecil County College called me and said, can you teach a, a photography class? I said, I can tell you everything I know about photography in about a half an hour. <laughs> and you want me to do 12 <laughs> classes? And she said, we love your work. She said, we'll do your syllabus. We'll help you through, the, through it. And I said, I, she said, please teach our course. And I did. I taught for like four or five years. But it got too, I couldn't get down there in time mm -hmm. from, from working at the paper. And, yeah, and, and like they loved me. And th she said, we just want you to be there with your name and your talent. And I did. I ended up teaching for a while. But. And I loved the students, and they loved me. But I said, I know nothing about photography. I said, I swear to God, and uh, and I still don't. I st I have to ask him. I don't even know what cameras I have. I have two cameras, and I don't know about the the, uh, the what the lenses do with the size of the stuff and all that. And I have people call me. They want me to go out and take pictures with them and stuff. I said I will, but I don't don't ask me technical things because I just don't know. Well, it's it's so funny too that like some people just have that eye, right? And and if you can get the the camera to a point where it'll work with your eye, you're good. I can remember uh, for a year I worked, I, I lived in Wyoming and worked for the Casper Star Tribune. And, you know, I mean, it was fine. It was a, it was an early job. I wasn't making a lot of money. So I, I worked like one day a week at a, at a camera shop in Casper. And I used to teach like at night, like a little, you know, oh, hey, you bought a camera, come in, you know, 40 bucks, we'll sit down for an hour and we'll, we'll teach you how it works, right? And all people wanted to know was what are the settings I need to take a picture yeah. of a buffalo? Yeah. What are the settings I need to take yeah. a picture of a deer? What are you know whatever? And it's like it's not that's not how it works, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's not like you you there's a deer setting or a buffalo setting or a wolf setting or whatever. There's a there's a setting for any instance in the world, but you need to know how the camera works to do whatever. But then you come in and you're a badass and you don't you're just like whatever. I just turn it on and I and I point it and it magic happens. And that is so special because there's just some people that have that. And I've been with him on many occasions, and I've he'd, he'd we'd be driving to an assignment. He said, "I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do." I said, "Dad, you'll be fine. You, you know what to do." I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to shoot this. I said, "You'll be fine." And then, sure enough, the next day, you know, the picture's perfect. Yeah, Man. we got a, we got a whole book right here. I mean, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one problem with doing an audio interview with a photographer is you can't I can't can't translate the photos into 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 sound but we had a whole book here and, I, and there's a lot of photographers don't get books so you were clearly doing something right yeah and and and, and I, I was going to say that a, a, a lot of good photographers came through and i was back in the day i was pretty hard to get along with i was pretty 
competitive and gave my bosses a hard time. I was suspended a few times for fighting with the editors and things like that, and I've calmed down a little bit since then. But I mean, you know, Pat Crow, Don Brown, Chuck McGowan, Ron Cortez, Leo Mackins, Bill Sneed, Gary Amy, Kevin Fleming, Ron Dubik, Jody Cobb, all this, and like you said, the New yeah. Journal was a, and, and the people said they were a powerhouse. Everybody, even people that I wouldn't mention, everybody was, we all, they had always good photographers. A lot of them didn't stay more than two years. Well, you hit what, two, three National Geographic photographers in that list? Yeah. 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 Jody, uh, Kevin Fleming. But yeah, they're that, and even the people, they were all good photographers. Almost, we never had a bad photographer at the News Journal. It was weird. I mean, I know Kansas was great, and other papers had really good photographers, but the News Journal for a long time was really up there. Yeah, it was. I mean, I can remember when I came on. So I, I re- you know, this little background, I replaced Fred at the News Journal when Fred retired, and the shoes that I was stepping into were gargantuan. That was, I can remember being in that newsroom, and it was like the the ghost of Fred Comedies was hanging. It was like, who's this kid? Who's he think he is that he's going to come in? And, and Fred and I, we got, we got to work together for a summer when I interned in 2009. And I can remember sitting there and watching you work. And it was like, it was just so cool to see, you know, I'd heard stories, but to see it was really, really awesome. So I appreciated that gravity of, of it. But I can remember when I came in, there were probably, what, 13 people, I think, on the staff at that time. Yeah, a lot of things. You know, now it's like five. I can't, back in the yeah. 60s, 70s, I mean, how big was the photo staff then? Not not real big. No, really? No. Huh. What, eight, maybe? But then it got bigger, yeah. Uh, the like through the 80s, uh, the 70s and 80s, it got bigger. There yeah. was more photographers. But, but it was more old school back then, yeah. you know, uh, older guys and different cameras and stuff yeah. like that. But then it got new as Bill Sneed and Gary Settle came in from Kansas. And oh, Dad, did you mention Don Brown? Yeah, Don Brown. Oh, sure. boss. He was yeah. one of my bosses. He was a sweetheart. A sweet guy. I and he was that. a good photographer in his own right. And he was a chief photographer. Suchot Peterson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a boss. He was a good photographer. Yeah, I love Suchot. I mean, Suchot has been a great mentor to me in my yeah. career. Been, yeah. Been a great yeah. guy. Friend, friend of the pod, as we like to say. Friend yeah. of the podcast. Um, I was actually talking to Suchot. I was like, hey, guess who's coming in? Fred. And he's like, that's awesome. And I was like, you got to tell me, like, what are the stories I need to pull out of them? And he's like, I'm pretty sure once you get started, they're just going to happen. Yeah. I mean, he was good. They were always good to me. I mean, yeah, I just, and I sort of got through by the uh, Lincoln camera and cameras, et cetera. Whenever I needed something, I'd run by there and say, how do I, what's the camera, what I have to do to make this thing work? Or, and they would give me the answer. Say, yeah, just do this or put the camera on this and. People would ask me, oh, and, and I had that show at the Wilmington, uh, at the Delaware Art Museum. And uh, that was cool. And they bought my show. I mean, they it's still there, so that was kind of cool. That's awesome. Uh, uh, I was lucky, lucky the whole time. That was, uh, and now he's a great photographer, and he's a big help. And my daughter, Candace, uh, she did my did a Facebook page for me, and I don't even know how to do that. She puts <laughs> pictures on for me. Is Kansas the one? Uh, Kansas, Kansas, the one running the uh, running your Facebook well, page? Yeah, and, and the, she runs a bar for me. We own yeah. the bar. She does that too. She's awesome. Both my kids are spectacular. I started seeing all these posts on on Facebook, from, and I was like, when did Fred get get on Facebook and start throwing stuff up? I wondered. I was like, he's gotten really tech savvy. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> my sister Candace gets all the credit. Yeah, yeah. She, she does. She's your social media manager. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wish I, I, I got to start learning that. She said, she said, Dad, it's not that hard. All I have to do is this and this and this. She said, if I can do it, you can do it. I can, it's not that hard. But uh, but his stuff is. Oh, yeah, but you're you're on every day throwing uh, stuff up. And I'm like, you know, oh, man, where did he get that from? Where, yeah, it's just, it's cool. It's cool to sit between you guys. It's cool to be amidst, like, this amount of photo talent and experience. It's and, good stuff. And I mean, he picked up a camera. Uh, started r- running around with a light. I have pictures of him when he was like four or five years old, and I was amazed. He took pictures with his little stupid <laughs> brownie, brownie, uh, uh, cameras you got yeah. at yeah. a little plastic camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah one yeah. of his first pictures at a at, at a boat yard was an amazing picture. I said, God, this kid has latent talent. I mean, he was good from the beginning. He won a a, a, new, a clip contest at the age of thirteen or something. I, you know, he said, Dad, can I take a camera to the, the tennis match? We went to a, sat in the stands with Macaron and somebody else. Connors. Yeah. At the Spectrum. Yeah, at the Spectrum. And, and Pat Crow was there covering it. And he said, can, I, could we, can we turn this into a thing? So we were driving down down the highway, and we pulled we pulled into the News Journal, and, <coughs> and Pat was there and said, that's a great shot. He said, I said, why don't you turn it in? I, I said, do you mind? He said, oh, hell, I don't care. And, and it ran in the paper, and it won the clip contest. Yeah. Lucky. Look at you. Yeah. And then it was nice of Pat Crow to, yeah, to do him. that. Yeah. He, it was just, you know. 
But in also in like true comedy's form, you know, how many, what, 30 years later, I asked you to judge a clip contest and you're like, how does photo mechanic work? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I'm kind of like him. Hey, <laughs> and it's working. I'm for not technical. You. I'm not, I'm very, I'm very old school. Yeah. I, I just keep it as simple as I can. I know the basics and, and that's it. I, I should know more. I mean, but, but if, I, I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, yeah, but I should, should still know more, you know, what I'm doing, but. That's why I, I like the old school photographers. You know, I, I I think a lot of young photographers nowadays should study the old old school guys yeah. back in the fifties and sixties and you know you know, I don't know. How it was done. Well, I can remember when I shot that that Eagles Lions game in the snow and autofocus went out the window. Like there's it, snow no, was coming hey, down so hard. Yeah, what do you do? I, I've never had, what do you do in a case like that? Well, you had to f- put it on manual. Well, you, you Yeah, but that's but the thing is like the cameras aren't designed to be done that way. The viewfinders are like a quarter of the size that they used to be. Yeah, a lot so, smaller. So you're, you're while yeah. you know a football game's happening at full speed and you're looking through a viewfinder that's you know yay, I mean you know you have a you have an icon you know how how small they are now and you're trying to manually focus while they're running. And it's like, hard. and it, oh God, I was like 25, 26 at the time. Like I never tried to manually focus a football game, let alone an NFL game in the snow. I mean, it's crazy. I'll still manual focus if my, cause sometimes my autofocus will screw up and I say, yeah, all right, I'm just going to manual. And luckily I, I can still manual focus, which is, you know. Yeah. Well, it's a skill you got to, and we do, I would say most of the videos that we're doing, we're manual. Manual focus. Yeah. yeah. Because you want it, you want it right, right on, on yeah. that freckle, right? That you're trying to get. It's just. Yeah, all the focus. Sometimes you can't trust it, and, as you know. You yeah. know. You and know. people don't realize, like this book, everything, most everything is manual focus. Right. Like sure. That. Yeah. And, and no autofocus, no digital things, no what Nothing. else, no man- manually. Autofocus wasn't and even. Film, a, and all this is film. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And autofocus wasn't even really a thing in film until what the '90s. I mean, uh, yeah. it, it was a while before mm-hmm. that technology was mainstream. And, and I didn't. I spent a day with Muhammad Ali, and I shot like three rolls of film. <laughs> he said, Dad, I, know. I should have put 12 rolls, at least 10 rolls. Oh, my God. I was shooting a book with Kevin Fleming on NASCAR, and he came by. He had like 10 photographers shooting. He said, Fred, you shot two rolls of film. He said, God, push film through there, man. You got to shoot more film. And I couldn't do it. I just couldn't, unless it was something I saw that I liked. Yeah. And then I ended up getting, he said, the best shot in the book. But I, don't, I had a nice shot of Dale Earnhardt. But he, I, I, I was never one to. Mo- I be standing next to guys and go. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, you're not like that. I, you don't. I, you don't no. you can't. You're not I was a, never a machine gun shooter. No, you're not yeah. a machine gun. Much more deliberate. Yeah, I can remember. Um, but you never had to do film, right? No, I did in high school. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm, <laughs> for sure. So I learned. I learned on slide film and black and white. Uh, like, and, and we were we were bulk rolling our yeah. own film, yeah. so I got to do that stuff. But I was probably like the last group of high school kids. Last generation. That did because the the when that teacher retired, like the new teacher that came in, she was digital everything. She didn't want. She didn't. She wanted to. She closed the dark room down. She didn't want to deal with chemicals. Well, do you like digital? I I, yeah. I mean yeah sure because yeah, it's, cool. it's easy. Yeah, people right? ask me. I'm not buying film all so, the time. Oh, do you miss film? I said actually no, I don't. No. Digital is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going out. I mean, that was when you're in high school. Like, film at eight dollars a roll was not cheap. And even when we were doing bulk film, like we had to put that money up. And then we had and it got it got us so many rolls out, but it was still running like five dollars a roll. And I mean, it's funny that you say that, right? Because how how big were those rolls? Twenty four or thirty six? Thirty six. Thirty six. So three rolls of thirty six would have given you a hundred and whatever. That's and, nothing. Yeah, do That's, that math. Yeah. What, what is that? One hundred eight. One hundred eight shots. That's nothing. In this and. Stage. If I go, if I were to go shoot an NFL game right now, I would shoot a thousand and eight shots easily. Easily, yeah. right? If not more. If yeah, if not more, that would be a low. It would be a blowout, and I got bored in the second half sure. of the game, right? Like that's so to think you you were with. Plus, you're shooting with more cameras. You always take at for, least three. For sure, right? Yeah, I got I've got two, three probably a third. Bodies. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna have a two, my 200 to 400, a 70 to 200, and probably one with a, a 16 to 35 on yeah. it, right? And so you're hanging out with arguably the greatest boxer of all time, one of the greatest athletes of all time, <laughs> and you have a hundred and 108 frames. And I've seen those photos. And if I had a thousand frames, probably wouldn't have found some of the ones that you had in a thousand frames. I know, and, and I had he was hitting a speed ba- a speed bag. I had three frames. He said, "Dad, why?" <laughs> Why? This is all you shot? I said, well, I don't know. We just didn't do that. I mean, uh, uh, plus he would be bugging him. He was nice to me the whole time. And I was from Podunk. He didn't know me from Adam. And uh, You so had great access. Yeah. Yeah, back up, back a little. Let's do a little background on that story. How You, you hung out with Muhammad Ali. How'd that happen? 
I, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't know whether they sent me up there or I asked to do it. It was before the Frazier fight. I spent a day with Joe Frazier. Uh, not a whole day, but a day with each other. I, I wasn't a day meaning, I mean, he had his own private, For sure. you know, whenever he was in out in the open, I was sort of with him, but I didn't like bug him. I pers- purposely didn't bug him. I'd only shoot a few frames and I'd back off and mm-hmm. give him some space. But I did ask him, I said, can I go to your cabin when you're done? I wouldn't mind getting a couple of pictures of you with your wife. Then I'll leave you alone. I'll go back to Wilmington and and I only shot a few frames. He had a, it was a nice picture. He was sitting in his a big chair and he had his shirt Th- off. And this is had, Ali. Ali. Yeah. And he had his like khaki pants on. He's on the phone. Made a really really nice picture. I shot one frame, or two frames maybe. And then I said, "Thank you. You've been awesome. I really appreciate you giving me the time." I left. I left him. I let him go. Just why he gave me the time? Because then now, nah, man, you got enough. you had enough. And, and but he didn't. He let me do that. And I, <laughs> he was great. And he could have said. I'm not from Sports Illustrated. I'm not from Life. I'm from <laughs> paper down in Wilmington. And, and he never, <laughs> yeah. never, never said, you know, back off. You, I, or you, I think you have enough. Like some people you shoot, my, that are pretty important. I'll say, I think you I got have it. had enough. Yeah, I for sure. You, yeah, I think you got. And back in those days, like this, I think it was in '74, you shot that. You had more access. Nowadays, you can't do that. Yeah. There's no way you're gonna have the now. That I sh- and I spent a, a day with Fraser up in Philly. Now Fraser is <laughs> a different story. But I mean, uh, they came in. The, I was back. I was again. I'm the only white guy there. Um, I'm back in his office with him. They bring him a, a, an attaché case. They open it up. It's loaded with hundred dollar bills. And he said, "A man, don't, don't, I don't, don't take a picture of this." And that's all he had to say. I mm-hmm. said, "That's fine, cool." And I don't know <laughs> his money was or <laughs> why, why it got there. But there was a whole lot of money that showed up. A lot of money, but yeah. I, I said, that's fine. I, I would, I respect, you know. They're, it's their domain, whatever they say. If you if say, don't take a picture of this, and you don't take a picture of that. Yeah. And he was cool, too. But, but not as cool as Ali. Yeah, but, you know, it is rare to find now guys who will give you that latitude. Yeah. That you're just a guy, right? You're not European. so-and-so from Time or National yeah. or Sports yeah. or whatever. You're Joe Local Photographer. Yeah. I, like, I think, at least in my recent experience, like, Biden is very much like that. Like, he will make time for you. I can remember being at the DNC... And he did, he, we were over, you know, DNC was in Philly. This was 2016. You know, Democrats were feeling really good at that time. And, you know, he, I think a lot of that played into it. He was just, he was in a very good space. And he went over to McGillan's uh, down there in the middle of the city, that old, 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 old pub. I think it's been there since the 1800s. And it was where a bunch of the Delaware delegation was hanging out that day. And so he came in just to hang out and talk. And I asked him, hey, can I make a portrait real quick? Because it was a really cool old bar, right? And like, and he let you do it. And he was like, "Sure." And then people kept wanting to come up and talk to him. And he was like, "No, no, no. He's trying to take a picture. I need you to give me some space." That's cool, right? And can you like, how many politicians would give you that latitude? Did, did it work out pretty good? Uh, yeah, I really like it. It's one of, I mean, it's one of my favorite pictures that, like, portraits that I've made for sure. Well, I got kicked out of the White House. <laughs> oh, I'm. I don't doubt that because I know you. But I, but I, yeah, I, you got to tell this story. All right, so tell me this story, uh, Fred. Tell me about the time you got kicked out of the White House. Well, with Joe and Joe Biden, I got along great all the time. But you're good friends. We, yeah, we, me and, um, well, who is the boss? Uh, Ledford, Dave Ledford. Do you mm-hmm. know him? Yeah. Well, him, uh, two reporters. Who, who, who? I don't remember. Well, there's like three or four people from the News Journal and me. Well, we we got into the White House, got in his office. And there was a guy from, he had two people of his people from his staff. Jay mm-hmm. Carney was the one. Yep, I've seen these photos, yeah. But I didn't know, I thought he was a Secret Service guy. Because, uh, so I got, they were all, all the report. Uh, I thought I would have time with Joe by myself. For I, sure. I didn't. So there's all these people around him, but I, I couldn't get any. The tight shots could have been taken anywhere. Right. I probably shot some with a long lens. But they could have been taken anywhere. So I got chair and I got close to Joe while he was talking to the people and the guy said, Oh ho ho, you're too close, you're too close. I said, I've been with this man all my life. He's a friend of mine. And and he said, No, you you, you can't be that I was like from from me to you. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah. maybe so like so like two and a half, three feet away. Yeah. With wide wide angles. Mm-hmm. They're pretty nice. Because he was expressing he didn't I didn't bother him at all. But this guy said, No, you're too close. You're bothering him. I said, well, I didn't want everybody else in my picture. It's the only way I can do something to make it look like it's in his office. Mm-hmm. He said, no, you can't do it. So I backed up. And then the whole thing was over, and I didn't have any pictures of him that showed he was in his office. Mm-hmm. So he's, they, they, the, uh, the news journal people, they took out to the waiting room or whatever, and I was still in there. 
and he picked up a paper like this. He was looking at it. So I took one picture, and this guy screamed. He said, what are you doing? That's personal. That's classified information. I said, I'm shooting with a wide angle lens. You couldn't read it if you blew it up a thousand times. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're out of here. He said, you're, you've been a pain in the ass. And I said, I, didn't, I don't have any pictures of him by himself. And Joe said, well, let him, t let him take a few more pictures. And so he went over by a window and did something that, like he was doing something with some other pictures or something. I took three more frames. And he said, you're done. Not Joe, the other guy. Yeah. And he said, I'm, you're going back out with your people. And he said, follow me. And I, Christ, I thought he was going to a jail or a dungeon or something <laughs> like that. And I, I come out, and they're, they're laughing. Ed Ledford's laughing. They've got following this guy oh like I was a four-year-old uh, kid being punished. That's going, funny. Yeah. And, I, like, I mean, it's uh, for viewers who don't know David Ledford, like, if you could hear his laugh. Yeah. Yeah. They were howling. Yeah. And this guy said, this guy's been a pain in the ass or something like that. So <laughs> I said, well, you guys are in my way. I said, I couldn't get a picture that I wanted. I thought I'd have some time with Joe, maybe five or ten minutes, uh, mm -hmm. but, but I didn't get it. But anyway, we're driving out of D.C., back, going back to one and we get a phone call. It was, it was Biden. I told him that. He said, tell Fred, I apologize that, that he didn't get the time he needed. And uh, that was it. But that's Joe, right? It's a Delaware thing, too, but that's so him to take that time out to make sure that you were all right. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, I didn't get what I needed, but we were down there with a bunch of reporters that are in all my pictures. So I, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I didn't do it right. I don't know. But I've seen I've seen pictures from this shoot you're talking about, and I think they're great. Uh, do you tell him? Should I tell him about when we shot him? And yeah, you might. Well, <laughs> we were both with him. Yeah. Well, we were at a church. What, what day? What? It was St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. That, that at his church. The day before, they had accused him of being uh, hugging kids or being. Oh, this is this is when the campaign like was first starting, first starting. and it was like exactly. what what when thing is, can get thrown at him? Yeah, yeah. And when is he going to announce? And they yeah. they accused him of what's his name of. Uh, Trump called him a, he's been hugging kids and he looked a little weird. Which is ridiculous. Joe showed up late. At, we went to St. Joe's on the Brady and wife, figured he might show up. And he did. He was late. He was like 15 minutes late. He's walking up the aisle just by himself. Joe was uh, escalated up and Butch and I were there. And we took a couple of pictures as he was coming up and he says, uh, stops for a minute, he says, uh, Fred, who paid you f to be here? I said, Joe, what do you mean who paid me to be here? <laughs> I said, you know, I'm retired. I'm not a paparazzi. Yeah. I think he thought we were probably shooting for a national inquiry. Oh, because everything was going yeah. on? Cause, cause Which we weren't. Everything obviously. came yeah. out about him, and he was kind of probably a little bit... Mad. Well, yeah, he's defensive, for yeah, sure. very defensive. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of bothered me. I said, Joe, come on. Yeah. You know, you're being, you're being a little ridiculous. And, uh, and, and he walked up back in the church, and we waited until he came out. And he was a little bit nicer then. But he's over there to see his mother's grave. He said, I'd rather he didn't take pictures of that. I said, that's fine. But anyway, we didn't take any more pictures after that. But yeah. I, but I thought that was a little underhanded com com comment he made to me. I, I didn't appreciate that. Mm. You know. Have you guys talked since? No. No. Oh, no, that's not good. No. And he did call Dad when he retired. He called him. Yeah, the day yeah, I retired from the News Journal. He called you out? called me at home from, New from California. That's awesome. Yeah. Talked to him for like five or ten minutes. He said, Fred, we are really going to miss you. He said, I love you. I don't know what I'm going to do for pictures. I said, he said, you, you've done a great job. You know, my staff called from Delaware and said, you retired. I said, you know, we love you. And, you know, I've always gotten along. I mean, I've, he would let me up to take pictures when Bo ran for one attorney general. Mm. And everybody else was mad. They said, why are they letting him up? Nobody else. And I said, I don't know. And, you know, I went up to the room. They were all celebrating. And he was always good to me. Always. Him and Bo and the whole family. And he and made that comment. I just I just thought that was yeah. uncalled for. Yeah, I, you know I I, I I hear you. It's hard to know what is going on for him with everything that's been thrown at him in this yeah. this yeah. thing. You know, it's really he, really unfortunate. Yeah, he knows I, I'm retired, and he probably thought somebody called mm -hmm. from some news parents. Hey, get some pictures of Biden. <laughs> We're gonna. He's they're blaming him for being this or being that. Right. Because he's thinking, like, why are you here on a random yeah. Sunday or something? Yeah, well, this yeah. is before he announced. We were wondering, right. you know, it's yeah. going to be any day when he announces yep. he's going to run. That's the reason we are right. there. And yeah, and you guys are excited, right? Because oh you know God. it's Uncle Joe. Right? It's Uncle yeah, Joe. Yeah. And he yeah. knows my dad. He knows yeah. me from being up in Scranton. Yeah. I had a really sure. nice picture of him coming out with the cross in the back. Right? The yeah, white it was. Cross. Yeah. Real nice picture. Yeah. But you, you covered him for. Forever. Ever, right? I mean, you would have been there since the day he joined, before, even before he joined county council. Uh, I, I would think. Uh, I have a picture of that I might even put on, get my daughter to put on, down at the, tr yeah, he ran for president down at the train station. Yeah. Day. Yeah, with this, with, uh, yeah, I might put that on today or tomorrow w when he ran for president the first time. Nice picture. <laughs> he looked. 
different, a lot different then. But yeah, yeah, I got along good with Bo and all those guys. But I was a little hurt by that. But uh, you know, maybe he, yeah, he's got a lot. Of, he had a lot of stuff being thrown at him. So for sure, yeah. How did how did that relationship start for you? For, oh, who? Between you and Joe, like how did it just from all the years yeah, of you for, being, for there. being there? Yeah, yeah, and he got used to. And other people, Mike Castle and all this people, I know all those guys. They know you. I mean, Mike Castle's wife at, at, at Joe Biden's mother's funeral. They were the, the politicians were walking up, and she came over to me and hugged me. Uh, Mike Castle's wife, and she said, "Fred, we love you." You know, and that was nice. Made me feel good. You know, so they they know who they like and who they think is good and who's out there to do right by them. You yeah. know, they know you have to be there with the bad and good. If something bad happens, you still got to shoot. And they trust you. Yeah, they trust yeah. you. And they, and, I, and they should. People trust me, and they should because I did what I had to do. Yeah. yeah. It's such a Delaware thing, right? Yeah. There, there's a closeness. It's still an it's still a a community thing, right? You're still neighbors at the end. Yeah, of the I'm day. from here. I'm, I mean, I know all these people know me. They, uh, you know, I'm I know everybody. That's one thing that's really like endeared Delaware to me as a, as you know someone who grew up in Maryland but been here for seven years now that it's just it's such a community feel you you know the governor is the governor yeah. but he's still your neighbor he's a family right? friend right. Right. yeah the governor's yeah. a friend of ours mm. Carney he knows Butch yeah, yeah. He came over to Butch the other day he's oh Butch man and yeah. you hugged him you know that's yeah it's a he's yeah. another guy that's got like a really oh, he's awesome. I, uh, uh, indelible laugh when you hear John Carney laugh it is it is like. It is billowing and it is like genuine and it's so fun. I, every, I don't. We were we were at some library thing, and uh, somebody said something to him, and it was the first time I'd heard it, yeah. and it just fills the whole room. But again, you know, normal Good guy. Good guy. Normal Real, guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we had we had uh, Jack Markell on here. Um, that was the last episode that we put out was the one we did with Jack, and like same thing. One of my first assignments, I was sitting in the front of a boat with Jack Markell, and like the whole time he's chatting me up. So, such the Delaware thing. I don't know. We keep we keep going off on tangents, which is great. That's what this is all about, right? It's like what's our time stories. limit? Well, however long you guys want to go, <laughs> we'll be here. All we got we got a hundred. have all day. We have a hundred hours of record time on this card. So <laughs> what do you what do you weed it down to? How, how much time? Usually, I would say most of them have been a little over an hour, like an hour and fifteen. Wow. Yeah, but and people listen to them. We don't want to bore anybody. No, I don't think it's been boring yet. So all right, so I do want to go. I do want to run through a couple of just stuff that I know you've shot in your career that I, I think you'll be pretty memorable, like the time you took a selfie on top of the Delaware Memorial Bridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that was both. Yeah, both and, that was, and that's why I'm glad you're here, because I know you're the one who was holding the camera. I was holding the camera, and yeah. he fired it with a yeah. remote. So tell me. Because he had to shoot it. Cause tell, it just... What year was this, and how did you pull that off? What, what, what year was 93, it? 93, I think, 1993. Yeah. Really? I think so. It yeah. was that, I thought it had to be in the 80s. No. Wow. Yeah, he knows. I think it was 93. Well, well it was for a show... Uh, Blue Street Gallery on Delaware Avenue. Uh, they invited, I forget how many, maybe 15 photographers. Uh, Pat Crow, they picked out of the news journal on me, um, being the only news journal people, and they said, we want a self-portrait. You can shoot it any anyway. way you want. And you're like, cool, top of a bridge, got yeah. it. I said, well, I'm a newspaper photographer. Let me do something where nobody else can get up. They won't let people up there. So I called the bridge, and he said, yeah, come out Tuesday or whatever day it was. So and I had an idea, and as I... I changed, I, I put on those other clothes when I got up to the top, and it had to be a self-portrait. So if you look, if you see the picture, my hand's in the, my pocket while I'm firing the, 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 the camera with a remote. He, Butch came up with me. He was holding the camera. He was lining it up, and I would fire with her, so it is a self-portrait. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the story. Now, the, the, the guy that got us up there, he wanted me to wear a safety belt because then that would ruin the whole picture. I said, no, nah, I'd rather not if I don't have to. And uh, and he said, oh, my God. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, God. He said, well, you you know without saying what's going to happen if you <laughs> fall. Uh, you know, you ain't going to be with us anymore. No. And uh, I'm not going to be with the bridge anymore because I'm going to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> your son's going to be a basket case. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Fred, do, do this. Is it quick. was fast. We did it quick. Well, we did it quick. quick. Yeah. You know, I walked down on the cable and we fired him and Dan Butcher. And Dad looks pretty good. And and, uh, and then we I had it for the show and it sold the first night. Somebody from the Delaware Art Museum bought it. The portrait? Uh, yeah. Wow, yeah, and I don't know who, what they did with it. So, for people who haven't seen this, uh, so if you if you've never seen the Delaware Memorial Bridge, it kind of looks like the Golden Gate Bridge, but it's green, mm -hmm. uh, and it spans the Delaware River, connects connects Delaware and, and New Jersey. Sure. I mean, anyone in Delaware listening to this knows what I'm talking about. And Fred is out on one of the cables yeah. running yep. down, 
and you got a hand in one pocket, one hand on, on the, the, on the, the <laughs> safety cable, yeah. just like kicked back, hanging out, no big and deal. you're in like a three-piece pinstripe suit, right? Uh, a sport coat and a sports pa- coat. Is that what it was? And a pair of pants on okay. a pair of dress shoes, dress, yeah. sort of dress shoes. Yeah. You know, but you're shoes. like dressed to the nines. It's like yeah. ZZ Top, sharp dress man, out on this, this bridge cable. Over time, with yeah. and uh, there might be like cars going by. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And uh, it is one of the coolest self porches I've ever seen. And one I can remember when I came in, and we were putting together like the the um, like a slideshow to celebrate your career. And I can remember seeing that and being like, no, this is <laughs> no, oh yeah, not real. How? <laughs> and I can re- I went up there with with Senator Carper. God, this had to be like 2015, 16. And I can remember being on top of the bridge. It's cool. And lo- it is cool, but it is terrifying. Like looking down those cables from the top where the yeah. the light pole is. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you've got it here in the book. Oh, um, yeah, he's got it. It better be in the book. It is, it is. I mean, like I'm not a huge fan of heights. It is terrifying. Oh, yeah. And then to walk out there and be like, nah, I don't need safety cable. Nah. Nah. And how old were you at the time? Oh, well, you were in it. He was in the nineties. You were an adult. Not, not real old. Uh, yeah. My early twenties. Yeah. So still. Yeah. Yeah. It was no big deal. It was like all right, cool. But now, that, now, now again, you we wouldn't be able to do that in this no, day and age. No, absolutely. I, not. I remember everything that went into us going up there yeah. in two thousand yeah. whatever. I now will. Things are more strict, obviously. So I, here's think. one thing. Here's one thing I'll put to you because you'll both you'll both relate to this. The things you'll do for a picture you would never do in real life, right? Like you get a camera and you're invincible. Sometimes. Do you feel like that? Oh, yeah. Because I I, there's things that it I've depends. done. It depends on the situation. The number of catwalks I've walked on that I would never oh, yeah. walk oh, on. Oh, I would do that in a second. Yeah. That's not... yeah, but it would never in a normal, like, for anything else. Heights don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a heights person, I but I will heights. get over it for that. Well, a shot will end up coming across. That was in, like, nine. Oh, Kyle, you got it. Yeah, you got it. Okay. That's oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that you've got cool. your own, like, lunchbox atop the World Trade Center, like, like picture with these guys. And this is... This is this is downtown. Yeah, the news journal is right there. Okay, which it's not there anymore. No. This is this is back when the news journal was downtown. Now it's like a parking lot. Yeah. What building was this? Is this like bank, what? The Bank of Delaware. But what is it now? I think it's a Bank of Delaware building. Yeah, but we don't have a Bank of Delaware. No. <laughs> no, I mean it may have been back then, but like now, would it have been like? I don't know what is it is. It probably like the I'm Citizens sure. Bank building or something. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, again, in this day, you would never be able to shoot. That no, down. you wouldn't. You, you wouldn't. Like, never how be would you? To do it. How would you even get close? Forget yeah. it. And no. not only that, those guys wouldn't just be hanging out like that either. No. Right? Yeah. No. Just to so uh, yeah. Let's talk about Nick Walenda. Right? That's a big one. Yeah. I so would. how did that come together? Carl Walenda. Or Carl. Sorry, Nick Carl. Carl. Yeah. Is it what is Nick the younger one now? I think it's a son. That's the son. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one I'm used to. But Carl. Carl. Yeah. Let's do. Okay, Carl Walenda. Um, or, th- or this on the on the Lenape. I asked him if I could climb up the first uh, the first hill. Is this he, at Hershey? Yeah, no, no. Uh, Lenape. Where is where is uh, that? In Chad's Ford, they, it's torn down now. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, yes, okay. But the guy said, if you have the guts to climb up the first hill, you can go ahead and do it. So you climb. So this is so we're looking at a picture here of a of a wooden roller coaster that, um, if, if you've seen any of the wooden roller coasters at Hershey Park, it looks very similar. And uh, this is from like the top of the first drop as people are going over, and you climbed it. I, they let me walk up the first hill. He yeah. says, I want to get a shot of that roller coaster going over the first hill. He said, if you have the guts to climb up there, you can do it. And he let me do it. Yeah. And it's again, that's a picture you can't get anymore. No, I mean, yeah. Nobody will let you. It's no, amazing man. what you could do yeah. back, and the access just, you could get. Yeah. Because people were like, yeah, sure, you want to kill yourself, go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. <laughs> tell me tell me about Willenda. How'd that come together? Well, Willenda, when I found out that he was going to walk across Veterans Stadium, I got to the game like three hours early. I said, can I get up on the catwalk? And they said... Well, you have to sign a release. I said, that's fine. I'll yeah, do that. Sure, that's fine. I don't care. I'll kill myself. That's yeah. fine. Just let me sign it. <laughs> so I did. Um, uh, and I get to the, the, the ladder where you have to climb up, and there was a guy from the Inquirer and one other guy. Well, it came time and said, okay, you guys are going to go up there. You got to go now before he starts. So one guy chickened out. He said, no, I'm not doing this. So just me and the guy from the Inquirer. So we get up there. I go all the way around, and his kids were there. As you can see in one picture, they they were all the way around to where he would end up. The inquire guy wouldn't he he wouldn't go all the way around. Oh God, the picture was cool because nobody else had it. I'm up there. On, I said I'm the only one that's going to have this. Yeah. And I was. So I get back to the news journal. And they said Fred, you got to call some magazines. You got this is a great picture. So I called some magazines. They had already gone to Press, Sports Illustrated, and I called Life Magazine. They said, Well, we have pictures on the wire. 
And he said, you don't have any pictures like these because nobody else was up there. So uh, then, then I don't know, back then you couldn't transmit pictures. Right, that, right. You didn't have email. No. So they said, well, look, um, I don't know how I got them the, to see the picture, but they saw it. Describing this picture, <laughs> you know, you're looking down in, in back when it was the vet, right? So. Mm-hmm. So you got to imagine, you know, a, a, a full circle NFL style stadium uh, for for baseball. Carl Walenda just on the middle of this tightrope, and you can see the entire field and game and and stands below him uh, as he's standing there with this this pole. He's walking towards you, and yeah, I've seen you know I've seen similar shots before, but but from behind, nobody would come all the way around to see that. Yeah, it's and then pretty. So you see the kids grabbing him when he came when he finished up yeah right because you're at the finish you're at where he's going to end yeah they were crying they had tears in their eyes and i just just reached through the uh, thing and they grabbed the pole and he waved to the crowd and it ran life magazine called me said oh my god that's a great picture we're going to send somebody down can we pick up your negatives one normally i wouldn't you shouldn't do that but i gave him the negatives and oh yeah because back then you you get the negatives it's gone yeah and it ran that the the double truck in Life Magazine. I paid six hundred bucks, and they sent me a big print that they used for the magazine. I, I still I don't have that, but they sent the neighbors back, and they were thrilled. They said this picture is awesome. I got a letter from Carl Walenda. He said, "Mr. Cummings, that's the best picture I've ever had taken. Can I, can I get a print?" I sent him a print, and he sent one back and signed it. Uh, so everybody, that's so cool. Everybody was happy. That's so cool. Yeah. Tell me, you, you were you were here in Wilmington for uh, obviously one of the most defining moments of Wilmington's history, the riots. You were really young at that point. Yeah. You hadn't been there ten years. So what was that like? <laughs> it was a little scary. Yeah, I, yeah. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, <laughs> they just sent me down there. I don't. You know, I, the cops said, "You're on your own." <laughs> yeah, you're on. <laughs> you know, stay with a cop or stay. You know, uh, it was a little. Scary. No, it lasted for a couple of days. It, it it calmed down pretty quick. You know. The retrospective history of the riots, you know, everybody thinks of it because the occupation lasted for like nine months. Yeah. That everybody thinks it was this continuous thing, but it was a couple of days yeah, of yeah. bad. Yeah, that bad lasted only, yeah. only a couple of days. And then it was, yeah. when is the National Guard going to leave? Yeah, they were yeah. just trying to get the Guard out there. Yeah. Which which I think we've we've talked about before, and we talked, uh, we had, maybe I think it was Penrose Hollins we were talking about, you know, that... A lot of that, it was like a like a reelection ploy for the governor at the time. That like he was, oh, I'm going to keep these guys around so yeah. I can yeah. make it look like I'm the tough guy. And then as soon as he lost, he's like, okay, well, fine, you can leave now. Yeah, yeah they, they, they didn't crazy. have to be there. 1968, the stuff you could get well get away with. He didn't really get away with it. He lost reelection. I've I've seen photos of yours from uh, like one of Kiss's early shows. Do you remember shooting that? Uh, were, you, were you with me? Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. For anyone who has seen a Kiss concert, and you can, you know, you, you imagine the pyrotechnics and the big costumes, and you look at these photos from the early 70s. 77. 77, so late 70s, late 70s, yeah. and they looked like they went to the Halloween store yeah, it was crazy. to buy their costumes. It was so low budget back when it first started. But the only thing, when you shot concerts, you couldn't stay. They would only let you shoot two songs. Which is the same. Yeah, yeah, it's like three songs now. Yeah. If you're lucky, a yeah. lot of them it's two. Yeah, some people it's think one. you can stay. They want, you know, they, they grab you by the throat. Yep. And let's go. Yeah. You're out of here. Yeah, it, it is. It is interesting. That's kind of like the thing that hasn't changed. I mean, now you have a lot of, a lot of its rights grabs. Yeah. You know, they were like, oh well, if you're going to shoot it, I want to own the photos, and that's yeah. just crazy. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's nuts. But yeah, I still do uh, a fair bit for like WMMR, and and you know, I used to cover Firefly and stuff for the Journal. And are you going to do Firefly or no? I don't know. I mean, I need to find a reason to do Oh, you're talking to Butch. Are you going to do it? No, I think, no. I think I am doing it. Yeah? Are yeah you gonna... for, for the state news. Oh, cool. Mark Cleary, the photographer, he said, he said, it's all yours. You can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, know. Right, I mean, that's man. the thing. Like, I, would I said, l- I'll do it. I would <laughs> love to do it, but I, like, I need a reason to anymore. You know, like it, We uh, can both do it. Well, you, you, you get me hooked up on creds, and I will certainly right. come be cool. your assistant. No, no. Yeah, we can Kyle, both shoot. you ought to shoot. I will go. That would be fun. For sure. I would. I used to love it. That was the thing. You know, when it, before I left, I really like had gotten to the point where the only reason I was still shooting was Firefly and the Eagles. Like that was that was it. Those were the things I was still enjoying. It was like a lot of it had just become such a grind. And I'm sure you know. Yeah, if photographers don't make any money, no. Uh, yeah, I, if anyone thinks like people get into journalism to for get, the money to get it? rich, God, that, there's none of it. <laughs> I mean, no. like if you're an anchor on um, like like a CNN or something, you're making decent sure. money for sure. But like. Yeah, no, you're making... Now, if you work for the New York Times, I'm sure they get paid pretty well. But, but you're living in New York. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like, you get, yeah. when you take cost of living into it, it's probably about the same. 
You mm-hmm. know, I mean, like you're making you're making better money, but I mean, sure. yeah, it's just it's, it is not you. There, <laughs> there is so much more. So many more things you could be doing. No one is in it to get rich. They're Plus, everybody's a photographer now. Yeah. With their yeah. cell phones. I mean, phones, everybody's yeah. a photographer. Yeah. Which kind of... Yeah, but you know what? I mean, like, every time the new the new hot iPhone camera comes out, you know, I'll, I'll usually wait every other year to get one. And I still... It still has never replaced what a DSLR does for no, me. No. I can't. No, like, I even, agree. Even in a trained professional's hands, no. I just can't. No, I agree. For the average user, I'm sure, right? Because the best camera you have is the one you have on you. For the average person, if, if it's the camera you've got, when something cool happens, it's it's perfect. But, yeah, yeah I can't. I, I wish, I don't know. You know, the, I know you'll relate to this. Like, when you travel, you always want that quality in a smaller form factor. And there's never been. Mirrorless is kind of getting there, but it's still not. Because yeah, I still want the lens. I still, and the lens is where all the weight and bulk comes from. So It's expensive, too. All the, the cameras, not cheap. Yeah, it's not cheap. Thank God I can use <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad's stuff because I can't afford it. But that's where it comes <laughs> back to like we're digital. We're di- I mean, it's more the bodies and lenses are more expensive. Oh, it's but it's where it pathetic. comes in because you're not paying for film anymore. Yeah, yeah. So you're paying. So if you you just gotta use the heck out of them, so you get your money's worth. Yeah. And then if you if you did the math on what it would cost you in film, it probably probably levels stuff. But anyway, back to back to Fred's. <laughs> back to Fred. We're back talking, to Fred. We get, see, we keep going on these tangents. Many more stories for uh, Fred. What what was your like when so I know like I loved shooting sports that was my favorite thing what was your favorite thing to do or did you have one? No, I, I, I being around here I I just like no, I like pretty much every everything I mean I I shouldn't say that because I've been known to tear up some uh, photo assignments and throw them <laughs> on the ground so <laughs> people w- would have to take exception to that but yeah. um, I was just happy to be a photographer so I don't, I don't you know I. I might bitch about assignments sometimes, but once I got there, I was pretty. I was always nice to people. I mean, I, you know, if you saw me in the in the paper, you might say, "Oh man, he's a miserable guy," but when I was out on, in the public, I was nice to everybody. And you I, just needed to be out. You needed to be out doing. Yeah, yeah. doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And people, sure. I always tried to make people look good. I mean, and they would always say, "Don't take, you know, don't worry about it. It's not just go in, get in, and get out." But I never, I never had that attitude. I always wanted to make people look as good as they could. If it was a positive assignment. You know, if I was taking a portrait of somebody, I wanted them to look good. I really cared about the way people looked. And, in fact, people would call and they said, is there any way we can get Fred Comages? And they said, no, we can't do that. It was just whoever's on that shift is probably going to take your pictures. But I I was pretty conscientious about how my pictures w- looked, you know. I can remember when I when I first started and, you know, like let's say I went to go get a haircut or something. And you're sitting there in the chair and, oh, what do you do? Oh, for the news journal. Oh, you know Fred, right? That's the first question I would get all the time. Well, well, Bill Ballenberg, I, he, I don't know if you know Bill. He's a pretty good photographer. He came here from Jersey, and he said, he said, Fred, if I hear, or Herbert, too, said, if I hear, and I, so he said, from now on, when I walk into his place, and there's people there, I said, look, before you say anything, yes, I know Fred Comages. Now let's get on with the rest <laughs> of the stuff. He said, I'm so tired of freaking people saying, oh, do you know Fred, Com- <laughs> Fred Comages? He said, I'm so tired of hearing that. And so he said, I always walk in, I said, yes. I know Fred Comages. Let's get on with everything else, you know. So it's the people get. I said we get tired. Of, I said I get tired of hearing that. I wind up doing that with Joe Biden when people hear him from Delaware. And they're like, oh, you know Joe Biden. I'm like, I yes, I know Joe Biden. We hang out all the time. There you go. We do not hang out all the time. Although that would be cool. He he. The couple. I would say what the dozen times or so that I've photographed him. He's always been. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 We've yeah. always had a, that with him yeah. too. You know. Yeah. It's very. He's very much what you see is what you get. Exactly. Yeah, there's not a, like another. Yeah. Another Butch thing calls him Uncle Joe. Yeah. And and Bo is <laughs> not to his face. Yeah. yeah. No. But, but no. Although a lot of people do. I always I mean, address him as Mr. Vice President. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But in Delaware, you know, he's oh, Joe. Yeah. People. Yeah. 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 And in Scranton. Joe's yeah. And in Scranton. Yeah. Scranton. For sure. That's right. Joe's always been really friendly. Just that that one day he was in a bad mood. Yeah. Yeah. But Joe's always been good. They've always been good to work with the whole family. Yeah. All those people. When you're from here. And they know you're from here. I, they, they're nice to you. If you're nice to them, uh, they know a newspaper. They, they know sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do. Yeah. But, you know, they did this. You got to wait for them to get a picture. They know you have to be there, and yeah, that's the only bad part about it. Yeah. You know, well, just in Delaware in general. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For you sure. know, sometimes you're in a bad neighborhood, and they might get said somebody will say something to you when they walk by. Some, Something wise or rude, but, and you know, that's the way it is. Dad, how about the Irving thing? That was kind of cool. What is the Ir- okay? Dr. So, J. Oh, Doctor J. Oh, man, you got to you got to work in like the greatest sports era. That's, that's, what, that's what he said. Yeah. That's what he yeah. 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 I mean, you had Muhammad Ali, you had Doctor J. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you got to see so many cool things. Uh, tell me, tell me about this. So this shot here, I mean, it's Dr. J. He's in a he's in a tux in the bathroom <laughs> with his with his tennis uh, basketball. Yeah, with his with his with his sneakers on. What's uh, what's going on? Well, that was his final final game uh, as a as a player. And in fact, the one picture, the one of the starburst was in Life magazine. I don't know why they picked that, but they did. Uh, I, again, they saw it and they said we'd like to use it in the in the magazine. But the one of him in the, the men's room was great. Nobody else had that picture. I waited. Uh, everybody else left, and I said, "Hell, I'm gonna. I have the time. I'm gonna stay." And sure enough, he he has all his tuxedo on and everything else. He walks into the men's room. I follow him in, and uh, I only took like one frame or two frames. I said, "This is so funny. He's in a tuxedo with his uh, b basketball shoes on, uh, ready, getting ready to go out for the night." And uh, he saw, I had to see me. He didn't say anything. I, sh I shot like two frames. I said, God, this is a nice picture. And I, and I left. He never said a word. And I, and I love the picture. I said, oh, my God, that is so cool. Dr. J, final night, uh, <laughs> checking himself out. And he still has his uh, basketball shoes on. That's so cool. I thought so, too. I said, this is a, a nice picture. And it just goes back to that, like, what access used to be like. Yeah. You yeah. know? I mean, you used to be able to get he, so he never close. He never said a word. You know, then n not what two pages before. Well, but the page before that, you've got Mike Schmidt in uh, in '83. Although that didn't that year didn't end well for the Phillies. As no. an Orioles fan, I oh. the last time we won a World Series, but a great shot. And then not page before that, uh, McEnroe. Johnny McEnroe not not feeling good about himself. Yeah, I love the the caption. Uh, McEnroe humbled. Yeah. I don't know that that's ever been true <laughs> yeah. about Johnny McEnroe. Yeah. Arnold Palmer, OJ. OJ. OJ with the Bills. I'm not. I was never really into athletes. No. Um, Randy White w was from here. Uh, he played for the. He was a, from a high school here. He played for the Cowboys. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. That picture of Pete Rose is in the movie Bull Durham. Uh, on the opening credits, you'll see uh, a picture of that. That picture. That picture. I, I was coming back from the Olympics. I told my boss. I said, uh, I, it came up on the screen. I said, Oh my God, that's my picture. And, and he said, no. I said, yeah, picture of Pete Rose. They, they paid me Sporting News. They ran in Sporting News. And, and they said, we're going to use your picture in a, in a movie. And I thought they meant like a training film, you know, little bastards. And they, and they <coughs> used it in a, I thought, and they used it in a, in a regular movie. And they only paid me like 300 bucks That's for ridiculous. it. That's ridiculous. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, Dallas Green, it is a good story. Yeah. Dallas Green. Yeah, I went to, he went to the same school I did, Dallas. We, uh, same really? High, same high school. I didn't know he was from Delaware. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Newport. Went, went to Conrad High School. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It was this at uh, like spring training or was this spring? No, game? it's at Veterans Stadium. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I said Dallas. I, I, you know, he won the uh, what did he, he won the what did he win the World, World Series in nineteen eighty? Mm. Yeah. So I said, let me get a picture of him in the by, uh, with the logo since he won the World Series. And he, I will tell you, the Phillies have some of the coolest like seventies eighties graphics. When you go back and look at their retro stuff, like they they really were nailing it then. Uh, and then you got the boss. I've seen this in the bar, the the Bruce Springsteen photo. My father-in-law is like the biggest Bruce Springsteen fan. Wow, he's seen him probably like a dozen times. I like, I like, I like, I like. It's cool. I like Prince, Prince too. Yeah, yeah, Prince in there. So cool. So the, the you know the bar. When did you when did you open the bar? Thirty-two years ago. Thirty-two years ago. So <laughs> what? Why a bar? It's because we want to do something, and I I can't build anything, and, and a bar seemed like a cool thing to do, so we opened a bar. You were, and you were halfway, I mean, at that time you didn't know it would be halfway, but you were halfway into your news journal career. So how did you balance bar ownership and photojournalism? I worked two jobs, you know, but I didn't, I wasn't. You really didn't bar no, I, I didn't work. I didn't, I just went in and had fun. Yeah. Uh, but now the, the building's paid off and, you know, I go in with my, my daughter runs the place. She works on Tuesday nights and Friday nights. So I try to go in with her. I don't stay all night. I go in around 8.30 and stay till like 11.30 or mm -hmm. 12. And give her some company and um, talk to the people and stuff. So still hang pictures up in there and you know. In fact, a pic that picture of Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Uh, somebody bought it off. Uh, so I had to get another one made. Somebody just took it off the wall. Said, oh God, I love Bruce Springsteen. I'm going to buy it. For, uh, Fred, Ryan Cormier, I think, bought it. Did he really? Yeah. His his sister loves him, and she lives in New York or something. He said, Fred, can I? I said, yeah. And then I gave it to him cheap, but I said. He said, can I take it? I said, yeah, just take it off the wall, and I'll replace it with something else. But That's so cool. Yeah, yeah I like to say that's my favorite art gallery because it has all the beer I want. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, I don't look at it as a bar. I look at it as like have you been, haven't been in lately, have you? I probably haven't been in like two, three years. But I have a I have a buddy for a visit. I have a buddy coming into town next weekend, and uh, I am a hundred percent going to bring him in. So either Saturday, probably Saturday night. When you go, when you look back on your career now, what what is like one thing that you land on a lot? Like what really sticks with you that kind of summarizes what you you for fifty three years got to do. Just glad I got to do what uh, that something that I was halfway good at. I found what I, you know, like I said, that everybody has a latent thing they're probably good at that they never find. You know, somebody went through life and could have been good at something that they didn't know about, whether it be pottery, whether it be mechanics, whether it be anything. I, if I hadn't, uh, if the guy in my neighbor hadn't told me about a job at the News Journal, God knows what I'd be doing now. And something I didn't want to do, probably. You know, electrician. Yeah, well, no, I, <laughs> Christ, no, you wouldn't. Oh, shit, I'd be starting. Dad can't even and, hammer a nail. I, no, Christ, I can't. I, I've never used a hammer in my life. I mean, no, I couldn't. I can't do anything. I mean, I can't even barely do photography. So, I'm, I'm really lucky that I can't. Uh, that photography. Came in the up. right era, you were in the right yeah. era. Yeah, for I mean, sure. Yeah. Photo journal. I mean, even Jennifer said one day, she said, "Yeah, well, you came up through the the good time in photography, and it was, it, it really was." And and I'm uh, happy that my son did it, and my daughter. They've been really, really very good because my health has been a little bit crazy lately with my legs and my back. And, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's, photography has been good to me. And, you know, I, I, luckily that I fell into it and had a little bit of skill and, and a lot of help from other people. And I'm from here. I've been offered jobs all over the country and um, Washington Post and Canada and Florida, St. Louis and, you know, I have Jersey and, and I, I, I wouldn't want to leave here. And uh, it's been good, you know. The, for somebody who had no skill, you know, that uh, and still no college education, no college mm-hmm. education, and no knowledge, still don't understand a lot about photography. I'm not good technically. I mean, I got out, <laughs> thank God, <laughs> you know. Uh, and and the, thank God for the computer guys at the News Journal. I'd call down to to uh, the tech guys. And say, oh God, what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong now? And they come up and they touch a switch and say, Okay, you're good to go. And he, he said, Fred, when you sit down at a computer, the computer moans. And uh, <laughs> said, oh, No, my. that is true. Because I sat next to you when I interned, and I learned so many new swear words. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't this mother son of a mother. Mm. What in the guy you effing? That's what the, Fred. I, I just clicked on it, and mm. now it's what in the... I, I, I knew so little about it that when I left, on fr- when I had to work on Sundays, I put a note on my computer. <laughs> oh, no. said, computer is out of order. Because I had the thing set up. For the way I, the only way I knew how to run it, and I figured if nobody gets on this thing and doesn't touch it, it'll be the way I left it when I. That's a good idea that you did that. Yeah, yeah. don't mess with my settings. Don't yeah, mess with settings. I have no yeah. idea. There's not going to be anybody around to fix it if I don't know. I, I, uh, well, that's like when we first sat down. Someone has touched. Someone had touched channel one on this board because you you sounded really flat. And that's when I was like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something's different. Something's, and then I could see, like, oh, these dials were down. Like, someone's touched it. i got to put a sign on the board. Out, Out of order. order. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah, I mean, I've been lucky that, I mean, with photography, knowing, and people that know me know that I know really very little about photography still, that I got through it. And I'm, <laughs> I'm just lucky that I got through uh, the years that I did with knowing as little as I did. You got out of the bank just yeah. in time. Yeah, just about, yeah. You know, before the robbery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> had out of the bank before the robbery, and I have a great family that supported me. And Butch is a great photographer, and I'm, and my daughter's she's fantastic too. So they helped me, and 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 I had help from other people. And I was a little bit miserable at work with some of the people, but they put up with me. Thank God. Uh, yeah, I've been lucky. You know, it's cool, and I love photography. I still love it. I haven't taken any pictures lately, but you know, I, I try to get them out. I still see. Well, I I, I remember running into you at some stuff. Some high school games, some some UD games. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, a little bit. I'll put some yeah. stuff like that. I'm putting some older pictures on, too. People get a kick out of that. But, yeah, I'm, I'll be shooting some more stuff. But, yeah, it's been good. That's like any muscle. you gotta you got to keep working it or you'll, yeah. you'll stiffen up. Yeah, but, I mean, I've shot a lot of famous people, done a lot of cool things. I'm in the uh, uh, Dallas Green, who we just saw. He's in the Conrad Hall of Fame. Well, so am I. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, Deservedly so. Yeah, it's, it's been good. Life has been good. Photography has been good. I love talking to people about photography. And I always, when they come here and say, what do you, how do you do this on the camera? I said, boy, don't ask me because I don't know. You yeah. Know, I don't know. Well, Fred, uh, you've been, I mean, certainly an inspiration to me in my career. And it's been, it's, it's so cool to like sit and just hear war stories from you. That's been, it's been really cool. I, th- I 
I can't thank you enough for coming, especially on short notice. I know like I called you on Monday or Tuesday and was like, Hey, what are you doing? And you've, you've given us all this time. So that's been just awesome. Um, anything you want to add before we close out? Well, one thing, uh, uh, when I taught photography and people say, how do you get uh, those pictures like that? I said, well, <laughs> one thing you take a lot sometimes, I mean, you'll see one picture, but you don't know that the photographer might've taken two or three, uh, in my day, rolls of film or, or, I mean, I've been next to photographers that have shot a ton of film or, or uh, the digital thing. I said, you know, you see one picture, but you might have taken 50 to get that picture. So, you know, it's not always, you didn't go one picture and say, okay, I got it, I'm going to go. It, it, it doesn't work like that. Plus, I have five lenses to choose from. You're, you're, you're standing there at my class. I said, you guys all have one camera. You have a normal lens, which is like a 50 or whatever. I said, you know, I have five lenses to choose from. If I see a deer sitting out there and I have a 500 millimeter lens, you have a 50, <laughs> you know, I'm probably going to have a better picture than you unless you want a, a scenic kind of picture. So, so I said, you know, if you're a, a professional photographer, you got more tools. So I would take them out with me and I said, here's all my stuff. You can use my equipment and, you, and you'll get better pictures. Not all the time, but most of the time. I said, so, you know, we have, you know, uh, we have an advantage over you guys. We have more equipment. We have more money to use on camera stuff. We have more film, in my case, when I was teaching photography. I said, you know, so use my stuff. If you need more film, I can give you more film. I uh, said, so, so you're doing, you're all doing a good job. We just have more to work with. Yeah. You know, and we do it every day. You don't do it every day. You're, 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 you have other jobs. You have kids to take care of. You know, y uh, yeah, I, I can take some good pictures, but the law of average is you're going, <laughs> everybody's going to take a good picture once in a while. I said, I really, I've been through months. I mean, really, literally months when I said, oh my God, <laughs> I got to take a good picture. I haven't taken a good picture in two months. And I really have. I've been on droughts where, I said, oh my God, I got it, something's wrong. I, I, I'm in, I've been months without taking a good picture. And I said, it's weird. Uh, so don't feel bad. And, and if I say I did, and I've never been harsh with people too. I, I, I would never tell somebody that. I would never say, I, Butch came back with a story the other day. Uh, somebody said something bad about a picture and the girl started crying. I would never do that. I, I would always say, I might not have shot it that way. I said, maybe, maybe you could have done this. I said, I'm not. Ansel Adams, I'm not the end all. I'm not uh, 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 Annie Warhol. What's the girl's thing? <laughs> Annie Leibovitz. <laughs> not Annie Warhol. Annie Leibovitz. Annie Leibovitz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, I can't. I'm, God, I'm just a regular <laughs> photographer. <laughs> I said, you know, don't, you know, if, if you think I'm, I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings, I said, you know, my opinion is just my opinion. I said, I'm just one photographer. If I seem a little, I'm, and I never tried to be critical, I said, just my opinion. Don't take it too much to heart. Yeah. You know, if I say something that was a little bit wrong, that's just my opinion. Somebody else, I've judged contests where I'll, they'll say, oh my God, that's a great shot of that bottle of water on the desk. And then the, 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 usually the people aren't there to hear it. And so I, I don't care for it too much. And, uh, but, you know, so, you know, you might like it. Say, oh, wow, I think that's a great picture. And I say, I don't care for it. So you can't, don't get upset about things you hear. I mean, I've, been to contests where I've, where I I've, where I know my picture was better than one that won, but that's only because three people liked that one better than mine. You know, uh, I, I just try to do it without hurting people's feelings. You know, people, you know, people love pictures of their kids. They might have a really great picture of the kid, and might not, or they love sunsets. Amateur photographers love. Oh, my husband takes these great sunset pictures. I said, I'm sure he does. <laughs> I'm sure he does. You know, and everybody likes sunset pictures. So. I, I don't know. Yeah, I try. I'm never critical with people when they say, "Oh, you got to see my pictures of, of the beach or this uh, thing." And you know, they they're nice pictures. You know, and they, I, I don't know. I, I'm. It's very Delawarean of you. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't. I can never be critical. I, uh, I I would never hurt anybody's feelings. And there are photographers that do hurt people's feelings. And they're not. Nobody's that good. I don't care who you are. You know, everybody takes bad pictures once in a while. I mean, there's a lot of good photographers, but they take <laughs> pictures too once in a while, you know. And I know I do, so I, I can't be critical of anybody else. I just try to be pretty pretty good to people most of the time. Yeah, I don't, you know, and if you're out there taking pictures, <laughs> proud of you. I hope everybody has a good job, you know. I think it's a good place to end it. Perfect. Fred, thanks for coming in. Butch, thanks for coming in. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you guys. I appreciate it.
right. You ready to be fact-checked? Am I ready to be fact-checked? Uh, we got great interview with Fred, and now we've got Brian Cunningham. Did you know that Fred took a picture of me when I was in third grade? I don't, I don't, I'm not surprised because he's taking a picture of everyone in Delaware. Everyone in Delaware. Yeah, don't fact-check that. No. But. He's in third grade. He's wearing McCullough lion mask. Yeah. Oh, three hundred. That is a big. All looking up. That is uh, on his Facebook page. That is the cover photo. Yeah. And I've wondered, like, where was he that everyone was wearing a lion mask? I was the kid that turned to the left. So you can you can look at that picture and point <laughs> yourself out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would be the kid who wasn't conforming. That's what my mother said. You yeah. were the one that turned around while everyone else was perfectly posed. But you him. you helped make the photo. McCullough Elementary, uh, McCullough Elementary School. Right down the street, Newcastle. Yep, we were the lines. Yeah. Okay. So in our in our never-ending quest to replace mm. Sam's fact check mm-hmm. abilities, mm-hmm. Brian's filling in today. Mm-hmm. And what's the first thing that we that we needed to check? Yep. First thing, uh, you said eighty percent of people live within fifty miles of where they grew up. And ding, you were correct. I I swear I pulled that number out. High know. fives all around. Only twenty percent of Americans live more than a three-hour drive from home. There you go. New York Times story, 2015, Pew Research. Fact, 37% of Americans never move outside of their hometown. Wow. Yep. And 57% never move outside of their home state. So depending on what state you live in, yeah. that could be easier said than done. Yeah, for sure. Delaware's hard. I would think, actually, Delaware's pretty easy if you to move trip, out. if you trip and fall, you'll fall outside of the state. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Depending on the region, 80% of Americans live 6 to 44 miles from their mom. So I would imagine here, probably closer out west, probably farther, because towns are farther apart. I live six doors away from my mom. I live 18 miles from mine, but in another state. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, that's pretty crazy. Yep. Uh, All right. So crazy. What other facts do we need a check on? Oh, double exposures Uh, for you. Uh, photography buffs, double exposure or double exposed? Oh, right, 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 yeah. Double exposed. You had to manually set the camera to expose a new piece of the film. If you didn't, you hit the same piece twice and double exposed it. Yeah, so Fred talked about climbing up on the bridge with with a photographer. He was young, first thing out, and this guy had accidentally double exposed everything and they had to use Fred's photo. Yeah, so if you didn't manually make the film move, it stayed in place, and then when you exposed it again, you ruined it. You, it was the exposure was way off because now it was two sets of light on the thing, and yeah, it was gone. You but can that could be used as a strategy. Yes, you could do that if you intended to. You could do it, and you could expose it right, and it looks really cool. But yeah, yeah he, but that not guy in did that. That guy no. did not no mean to do that, and he ruined his shoot, and then had to use Fred's photo and put his name on it. Yeah, no, that's like plagiarizing. Well, it was very unethical. Very unethical. Very not cool. Uh, what else we got? So, Kyle, in the interview, you said you make the claim yes, firmly uh-huh. that modern autofocus didn't come around to the 90s. I mean, I don't know it was firmly, but I did say that. Uh, in, in the rare case that you are wrong, we just have to correct you. I wouldn't say you're wrong. I don't want to hurt your feelings. As Mari would say. I would just help you. You, we, we did the test, and the test says... <laughs> you are the father of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> the lie detector test determined that that was a lie. The funometer. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, you said that autofocus was uh, invented or didn't come around as we know it until the 90s, when, in fact, uh, the first autofocus uh, came out in 1978, Polaroid SX-70. And as we know it, Canon developed their first modern autofocus uh, system, in 1987 with Canon's EF mount. Late 80s. Yep. So I was a little late on but it. But any really good photographer doesn't use autofocus. I mean, that is definitely not true now, but it was totally true in Fred's day. Right. For sure. Yep. Cool. That's all I got for fact check. Good awesome. job this week. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank That's you. Awesome. What did you think of the podcast? I like it. I, I've always been a big Fred Comedy fan yeah. since I was a young fellow reading the newspaper. Just uh, being out and seeing him in town and seeing his signature hair in the wind, the Jerry Garcia kind of look. That is another thing that doesn't convey the in earring. podcasts. Is the that e- Fred, Fred just had, he, like, if you, especially if you look at pictures of him from the 80s, he was like Fabio. Yes, he's got a very 
specific look. Like someone should be on the, he should be on the other side of the lens. Yeah. Very specific look. But everybody knew him. You say comedies. If you're not thinking photography, you're thinking of a bar on Union Street. Yeah, which we also talked about. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Enjoy.